Welcome, everyone, and thank you for attending the USA Triathlon Age Group and Sprint National Championship pre-race briefing. My name is Emily with the Active Network, and I will be your moderator this evening. So before we get started, there are a few things that I'd like to mention. First off, you can now listen to our webinar through your computer speakers, so you don't need to dial in on the telephone. And during the webinar, all phone lines are muted. This webinar is being recorded, and the recording will be available through USAT's website after the webinar. And if you have any questions tonight, you can submit them at any time during the webinar using the question feature on your screen. Um, all the questions will be addressed at the end of the webinar. So presenting today is USA Triathlon Race Director Jeff Dyrick, and we also have John Taylor from USAT on the line answering your questions as well. Um, with that, I'd like to now turn it over to Jeff. Thank you, Emily. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we're, we're just over about, about a week away from Tuscaloosa. We're, we're getting really excited on our end, and I uh, hope you guys are as well. Just going to give you a quick uh, rundown of how the webinar is going to work. Uh, you know, we're really going to cover everything that you need to know for the race. Uh, that will include the Age Group Nationals Olympic Distance Event as well as the Sprint National Championship. So we will, uh, at times, you'll, you'll definitely see clearly marked what, what uh, Age Group Nationals information is and then what the Sprint National Championship information is. Uh, so as Emily mentioned as well, uh, go ahead and uh, use your uh, little bar at the bottom to, to type in any questions and uh, we'll get responses back to you. And there will also be a time at the end of the uh, webinar that you can continue to ask questions. Um, and then we'll also put up a, an email address so if you need to email questions after the fact, uh, you can send those to us as well. The webinar as well as the PowerPoint presentation that you'll see will be posted on the event website. Uh, so again, you can go back and listen to the uh, uh, webinar several times before you get there if you want to go over the information or if you know someone that wasn't able to attend. Uh, they can also listen to the recording and then also kind of thumb through uh, the PowerPoint presentations. So we'll get started here with the information uh, that you guys need to know. We're going to start off with the uh, schedule of events. So again, Thursday for the, the women's committee would be putting on a, uh, a women's swim clinic. Uh, you need to kind of pre-register for that, so do that ahead of time. Uh, then on Friday uh, at the Bryant Conference Center from 9 to 11, uh, there will be a coaching CEU uh, course taking place, enhancing uh, recovery. Uh, 11 to 6 will be packet pickup and expo, and that is in the large Sellers Auditorium at the Bryant Conference Center. Uh, on the campus of the University of Alabama. There will also be two rules briefings, one at two and one at four. This is your opportunity to ask the head official questions about the race. Uh, four to seven will be mandatory bike check-in, and that will be down at the event, uh, the, uh, event site, and that's at Cult, which is called Manderson Landing. Uh, again, four o'clock will be another rules briefing, and then uh, from five to eight will be the pre-race dinner at the University of Alabama uh, Ferguson Center. Uh, that you will need to purchase tech tickets ahead of time and you'll get those out packet pickup. For, sa for Saturday, we'll let's see, Saturday at Manderson Landing, 5 to 7, transition is open. At 7 o'clock it will close and then quickly at 7 a.m. Age Group National Championship will start. 11 to 2, approximately, is the uh, bike checkout. So again, at about 11 a.m. we'll start allowing bikes to, to be taken out of transition. Uh, 12 o'clock, uh, hang around for the Women's Elite National Championship. 2.15 will be the Men's Elite National Championship. Uh, and for the Elites, the award ceremony will take place about 4.30 at the race venue. Uh, 5 p.m., USAT's town hall meeting. That will take place right before uh, the award ceremony. And this is your opportunity to uh, talk to uh, USAT Board President Brian Harrington and the interim executive director, uh, Tim Yant, about where the, the sport is heading. And uh, again, if you had any questions uh, about the sport in general, you can ask those at those time. And then 6 to 8 o'clock is the award ceremony, which will be at the Bryant Conference Center. Uh, again, we'll be handing out the awards for the uh, Age Group National Championship at that time. Okay. On Sunday, Manderson Landing. Uh, again, for the Sprint uh, National Championship, transition will open at 6 a.m. 
And this is when you also check your bike. So there's not a mandatory bike check-in for sprint. So at 6 a.m. Uh, to 8 a.m. is the transition times. Uh, the race will uh, start at 8 a.m. 9.30 to 11.30, uh, approximately bike removal. And then at uh, 11.30, uh, approximately at the race venue will be the uh, award ceremony. So we're going to kind of walk through what your packet pickup procedure will be. So again, Friday, September 20, uh, 24th at the Bryant Conference Center, which again is on the campus of the University of Alabama. Expo will be 11 to 6 p.m. Packet pickup will be 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. as well. Make sure when you show up, to, and we'll go over this in a little bit more detail down the road, but make sure you park in the designated parking areas. And they're, they're right next to the Bryant Conference Center, uh, but we are on the campus uh, of the University of Alabama, so we have to kind of be respectful to the students and faculty uh, not to kind of go out of control with parking. So when you show up, we need you to make sure you bring your photo ID as well as your USAT membership card. And since we are anticipating uh, warm temperatures, uh, some humidity, make sure you're hydrating um, the whole time that you're there. So we're going to talk a little bit about the parking situation for uh, Friday and Saturday. For Friday, the let's see. For Friday, we'll be parking um, at the Moody Music Lot, which is we'll go in the next slide. We'll have the uh, the parking map. Uh, but again, when you get to the Bryant Conference Center, you'll see the University Baseball Stadium, the soccer stadium, and those will be located uh, just across the way, just a short walk. Uh, again, just make sure you, you don't need a permit to park there. Uh, don't park illegally. Don't park up on the grass. Just make sure to uh, again, respect the, uh, the parking lines and, and stay within the, the area. There should be plenty of parking there. As we get down to... Um, uh, the bike check-in, there are two lots, parking lots that we'll be using that are closer to the race venue. Uh, one is the Campus Drive parking deck, and the other one is the Ferguson parking deck. And you'll see those again on the next slide here where those are located. Uh, they are roughly about a half a mile from, um, from the venue, so you can give yourself plenty of time to get down there. Um, and then, uh, again, for those who are attending the pre-race dinner at the University of Alabama, you can use the Parkinson Ferguson deck, uh, the, the Ferguson parking deck, which is located just across the way from where the meals will take place. For Saturday, now I can't emphasize this enough, when you, when you come, in, come down to the race venue, if you decide to park on Jack Warner Parkway, your car will receive a ticket and it will be towed. So do not park uh, on Jack Warner Parkway, which is part of the race course. Uh, again, use the Ferguson parking deck, uh, the, the Campus Drive parking deck. Uh, those are your best bets. And again, you know, we'll show those on the next slide. So here's the, the parking map, and I'll kind of give you, um, I'll use my cursor here to kind of show where you'll need to be. So the, the, the race venue is down here in this blue section here. So uh, this is the Bryant Conference Center. Oh, I'm sorry, whoops, sorry about that. Here's the Bryant Conference Center. This is the Capstone Hotel, the host hotel. These sections in red right here are where you should park for packet pickup on Friday. So again, it's just a short 100-yard 100, 100 walk. Uh, down here at the race venue, when you got to come down for bike check-in, this is the Campus Drive parking deck. This is the Ferguson deck. This is the Ferguson Center where the meal will take place. So again, um, if you use these parking decks for race day and also for uh, bike check-in uh, on Friday as well, those are your best bets. Do not park in there. There are plenty of these are dorms down in this area. Again, their, their security is pretty good. Don't try to get in there. Park your car in the dorms. Uh, again, you will receive a ticket from the campus police. So again, use the designated parking areas for uh, for the event. You get a ticket from police. All right, so we're going to kind of go over a few things that are a little different that, than you might be used to in some of the races that you participate in. Uh, the first we're going to talk about is kind of body body marking and um, uh, your your number your bib numbers. So this. 
sheet of paper you'll receive uh, at the packet pickup. This has all the numbers that you'll need uh, for the event. You'll receive two swim cap numbers, which are these two in this area here. Those will go on your swim cap as you see in this, uh, the picture up here. I recommend that you put your swim cap on the night before, then apply the numbers, then take the swim cap off and let them sit overnight. Because if you try to uh, put, the, the, put the stickers on uh, while, the, the, while the cap is not on your head, they will just pop right off. So put the cap on your head, apply the stickers, take them off, and then uh, just be ready to race in the morning. This number here is your bike number. As you can see, it just goes on the front of your helmet. You'll have two bib numbers, and that's these two right here. And down the middle is a perforation. So if you're using a race belt, as you see in, the, in this photo over here, what you do is you just take the race number and double it over on either side of your race, uh, race belt. If you're choosing not to use a race belt, the sticker can just be torn down the middle, so you can just pull off one number, apply it to your chest, and again toward the back. And I recommend that you put your uniform on uh, before you apply the stickers, because again, they, they will pop off uh, if you don't do that. You'll also receive a few other numbers that you see here. Down here at the bottom will be your race number, or your bike number, excuse me. Uh, this bike number can be applied to your seat post or the rear brake cable, whatever, if you, again, if you have a, a water cage or something that doesn't allow your seat post uh, to, to put the number there, so on the seat post or in the rear brake cable. You'll also receive a bag tag, which is this number right here. Put that on your bag because you will, uh, there will be a bag check and only race essentials will be allowed into the transition area. In the center here is also what we have like a medical form. So if you are allergic to anything, uh, penicillin or bee stings or anything of that nature, you can write that information on this. Uh, do not turn that into the medical tent. Put that on the back side of your bib number. So again, if something should happen, the medical team will know to look there. So if you're allergic to something or have uh, special medical needs, they'll find it on that, uh, that location. So do not turn that into uh, the medical tent. Put that on the back of your bib number. So again, we'll just review that real quick. You got two swim caps, one helmet, your bib numbers, your bike, your bag check number, your bike number, your medical, and down here is a little fun one for anyone who's coming to support you that says I'm supporting in your race number. So that's a little bit different than what you're used to. The next one. I know when a lot of people, when you go to a race these days, yeah, you get in line, uh, we got the Sharpie markers out, and they're drawing their numbers on. So at Packet Pickup, you're going to re re, uh, receive temporary tattoos from Tri-Tats, which is going to have your number on. So it is your responsibility to put the number on um, the, mo the morning of the race, and it's pretty self-explanatory. You just use water. You apply it on there. You are going to apply it to each arm, you know, one on each arm, and then one on each shin. Because due to the nature of some of the uniforms these days, you can see on this photo here, you know, the shorts come down pretty far. So again, you'll put it on each shin and each arm. Now for age, when you show up the rate on race morning, we will take the Sharpies and we will be putting your name on your calf, uh, again, your birth date uh, or your age as of December 31st, 2010. So at, uh, pack, at uh, transition, when you check in in the morning, you'll be receiving a, a number on the back of your calf. Real quick on the rules briefing that you'll uh, that you can attend. That's going to be run by Charlie Crawford. Uh, that will take place on Friday, September 24th. There is one at two o'clock, one at four o'clock. And again, this is your opportunity to know the USAT rules. If you're not sure what drafting is, you're not sure what blocking is or abandoning an equipment, make sure you attend this, and you can ask the head official himself to explain it nice and clear. So again, know your draft zone. Uh, they will be out there calling penalties. Um, male athletes, you will be able to race without a top. So you, uh, again, you do not have to have a race shirt on uh, to compete. So in that case, you would probably need to have a race belt for your bib number. And just another one, again, courtesy and trying to be green to the environment. You know, don't throw your litter out on the um, out onto the course. Take it with you. Drop it at an aid station. Uh, so that way, again, if an official sees you uh, abandoning equipment, as they call it. Uh, you can receive a two-minute penalty. 
Bike check-in for age group nationals, the Olympic distance race, that will take place at Manderson Landing. And again, that will take place at between 4 and 7 p.m. Uh, do not come early. Don't be, come before 4 o'clock. Uh, again, try to get there by 7. You must have your wristband and your bike number. So again, make sure you go to packet pickup first. Do not uh, come after, don't come to the drop your bike off and then go uh, pick up your packet. You've got to go to packet pickup first to get your wristband and your bike number. Overnight security will be provided, so there will be plenty of officers down there to keep an eye on all your, on your gear. All you need to leave is your bike. Do not worry about bringing shoes, hats, helmets of those natures. Just make sure you, you uh, leave your bike. If you're riding your bike down, I recommend you have your helmet on because, again, at, once you set foot on uh, at the race venue, uh, you must be wearing your helmet at all times. So do not be, don't ride your bike around the hotel, um, around the, you know, the course without a helmet on. An official can give you a penalty if you don't have that helmet on at any point during the weekend. So again, uh, as I talked about parking, you know, camp, uh, campus, park, uh, campus drive parking deck is your best bet. That is at the corner of Campus Drive East and Hackberry Lane. There will also be bike support provided at that location, and Velo City will be uh, providing that for you down there. Bike check-in procedures for sprint athletes doing the sprint race on Sunday. Mandatory bike check-in, it takes place on Sunday morning, so you do not have to do that on Saturday, but you do have to check your bike in between 6.30 and 8 o'clock in the morning and that's during the times that transition is open. Again, you must, have, you must have your wristband and bike number, so make sure you pick up your packet on Saturday, get all your numbers put, applied properly. Again, parking, because you won't be allowed to be down on Jack Warner, make sure you park either at the Ferguson deck or the Campus Drive parking deck. And again, Bellow City will, be, will have uh, bike support at that location. Race morning, some of the things that you'll need to look at and be prepared for. So again, uh, for the age group nationals, Olympic distance race, uh, age group transition opens at 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. For the sprint race, it's 6.30 to 8, and that is, uh, I made a mistake on an earlier slide, so your sprint triathlon, 6.30 to 8 o'clock is when transition opens, 8 o'clock uh, it closes. Again, refer to the parking mat about knowing where to park, and very important, again, do not park your car on Jack Warner. They will ticket and, and they will tow it. Uh, when you arrive at transition, you'll pick up your chip and you'll receive a body marking, as I mentioned before, on the back of your cab with your age. You'll be entering the transition zone uh, from Jack Warner Parkway, so you'll cross over Jack Warner and you'll see the, uh, the top corner of transition. There will be an opening and that's where you'll enter um, in the morning. No excess bags will be allowed for the Olympic athletes in transition. Race essentials only. Olympic distance athletes, you will have to use the bag check um, on Saturday morning. There is no bag check for sprint race athletes on Sunday. You'll, you will be allowed to bring in a, a bag on Sunday. So again, Olympic distance athletes, only race essentials in the transition zone. And again, bike support will be provided. So if you need any last minute tweaks, uh, there will be a bike mechanic down there to help you out. So for Saturday, the age group race, age group nationals, uh, here are the wave starts. And I, it's very important when you find out what time your wave starts, you must be there 15 minutes prior to, to your wave start. And the reason we, we were, we're asking that is if you were there last year, you'll know, and you'll see that it's not kind of a normal beach start. Uh, you guys will be walking down a gangway onto a pontoon and then entering the water. So it does take a little bit of time to get all the athletes in each of the waves. Some of these waves uh, can get up to about 120 people, so we have to get everyone down to the pontoon and into the water. So make sure you're there 15 minutes prior to your wave start. And I'll run through this real quick. Um, 7 a.m. is wave one for males 60 plus. Wave two at 7.03, females 55 plus. Wave three, 7.06, male 55 to 59. Wave 4, 709, male 50, 54. 712, wave 5, female 50, 54. 
and you'll notice there's a break here, a, a larger, about a half hour gap here. So wave six, we will then jump to 745 for male 25, 24 and under, 748, female 24 and under, wave eight, 751, male 25 to 29, wave nine, 754, female 25 to 29, Wave 10, 757, male 30 to 34. Wave 11, 8 o'clock, female 30 to 34. 803, male 35 to 39. Wave 13 is 806, female 35, 39. Wave 14, 809, male 40, 44. Wave 15, 812, female 40 to 44. Wave 16, 815, male 45. Oops, sorry, male 40. Uh, 40, 45 to 49, that's near there, I apologize, so that's 45 to 49. And then at 818, wave 17, uh, females 45 to 49. So wave 16 at 815 is males 45 to 49. Sprint Nationals on Sunday. Again, get there 15 minutes before your wave. Again, we have the same start procedure will take place. We have to get you down the gangway on the pontoon and into the water. So wave one will start at 8 a.m. and that will be male 39 and under. Wave two at 8.07, male 40 and over. Wave three at 8.12, female 39 and under. And wave four at 8.19 a.m., female 40 and over. All right now we're going to kind of go over the, the course information. So I'll use my look for the red cursor going around the screen and we'll kind of uh, go with the flow, of, uh, the flow of the event through transition through the course. Um, and again, feel free to ask questions as we go through this. So for the age group nationals, Olympic distance race it is a one lap course, 1.5 kilometers. And I know people who were there yesterday, or I'm sorry, last year, yes, the dams will be closed. That has been a very key point in our conversations. Uh, so yes, the, that is under control. Uh, anticipate a non-wetsuit swim. So as of yesterday, the water temperature was 83 degrees. So again, anticipate a non-wetsuit swim. I would still recommend the, to bring a wetsuit just in case anything changes. But again, uh, we anticipate a non-wetsuit swim. It will be an in-water start, a rectangular loop. It will go clockwise. You will always be keeping the buoys on your right. The yellow triangular buoys will be your turn buoys. The orange round buoys will be your sight buoys. There will be a swim warm-up allowed, but again, that, that warm-up time will be, you can't go at any point to go do your warm-up. It will be right, you will be able to do your warm-up right after the wave ahead of you gets into the water. So behind the start area will be an area that you can get a few strokes in. Don't go too far up because, again, we're going to start every wave on time. So you're not going to have a whole lot of time for a warm-up, but you will be allowed uh, to do that. There will be plenty of uh, support on the water through boats, lifeguards, kayaks, and canoes. And again, I can't emphasize enough, get there 15 minutes before your wave start. All right, so this is your swim map. Here's your transition area. So again, the, the swim starts not that far from there. But again, in this location here, there's going to be a gangway down to a pontoon that's going to get you into the water. So once you get into the water, everyone will be required to put their hand onto the pontoon. Uh, you'll hear on your marks and the horn will go off. And again, it's just a straight shot to the first turn buoy. Right turn, right turn, all the way back in. Another right turn and straight into the shore. So that is your sprint or your Olympic distance swim course. Now for the sprint national championship, we are looking at a one lap 750 meter swim. Again, same anticipation of a non-wetsuit swim, roughly 83 degrees. Your course will be also rectangular. It will be an in-water start clockwise. You know, keeping your buoys on the right. There will be one left turn, but we'll go over that here in a second. Again, yellow triangular buoys will be turn buoys. Orange round buoys will be your sight buoys. Same with the swim warm-up. You will be allowed a warm-up, again, behind the start area.
but again, you have you only be going down when they call you down, and you only have a couple minutes to get a get a short warm up in. Again, plenty of uh, support on the water. Boats, lifeguards can use kayaks and get there 15 minutes before your start. So we'll look quickly at the map. It's a little bit different than the Olympic distance here. So your transition, your swim start will be the same area as the Olympic distance uh, race. So get down on the pontoon. You'll get in. We'll get you in the water. On your marks, the horn will go off. It's a straight shot to the first buoy here. Right turn, right turn. So here's the only difference with the, all your right turns. When you get to this triangular buoy, you'll have to keep that to your left, left turn, and then to the exit. So again, we'll go over that real quick again. You know, on your marks, horn goes off, straight shot to the first turn buoy, right turn, right turn, keeping this buoy here to your left, left turn to the beach exit. All right, for age group nationals, the Olympic distance, 40 kilometer bike, it is two laps. So again, uh, count to two. I hope everyone can, can handle that. Uh, we had a five loop course in Edinburgh, Scotland for uh, Do Worlds a couple weekends ago, and we had three, three laps this past weekend in Budapest. So I think two laps. Uh, the course will be plenty safe. It will be closed to traffic. So the course primarily takes place on Jack Warner Parkway, and it's rolling hills. Um, you do cross over the Bryant Bridge. The roads will be closed to traffic. There will be one area uh, after uh, McFarland Avenue. Uh, you'll, they'll kind of move you into the uh, north side lanes. So again, the, everything to the east of uh, McFarland, you'll be on one side of the street, and that is primarily for your safety. So again, there to keep there's a couple areas that traffic will need to be on the south side lanes. So again, and we'll go over this on the map. So there is one little part of the course where you'll, you'll be on the north side of the lanes. There will be no bottle exchange on the course. When you start your second lap, please be aware, watch for merging traffic. There, it'll, be, it'll be coned off. There will be some barricades. Uh, but please pay attention when you're starting your second lap as the people who are getting onto the bike course will be merging, uh, merging in with you. And like I mentioned before, know the rules because there will be plenty of USAT officials out there. So we'll just kind of go over the bike course a little bit here. So your transition area and all that will start right in this area here. So as you come out of transition, you'll head up on the McFarland, I'm sorry, uh, on Jack Warner, make a right turn, head out to Guildwood, do a U-turn, head all the way down Jack Warner, to roughly this point in here, and that's where they're going to switch you over into the north side lanes. So there will be cones down the middle, so you'll have one lane heading east and then one lane coming west. So as you'll come down, this is what they call Holt. So as you get down the Holt, you'll do a U-turn, start heading back west, move north over the Bryant Bridge. The, bread, the bridge will be completely closed to traffic. Do a U-turn at the edge of the bridge, heading back south, entering back west on McFarland, all the way back to transition. That is one lap. Then you'll start your second lap and do it again. So again, when you get to this area here, just know that there will be some uh, athletes entering the course, so just be aware um, as everyone's merging roughly in this area here. So that is your bike course, and that is two laps. Uh, you know, again, rolling hills, I wouldn't say it's overly um, challenging. But again, I think it's going to test some athletes. Again, also carry enough water on that bike course for you. Sprint. One lap course, 20K. Again, what you're going to do is you're going to do one lap of exactly what I just showed the Olympic distance athlete. So you're going to have rolling hills along Jack Warner Parkway over the Bryant Bridge. The roads will be closed to traffic, but there will be that one section uh, where they'll move, move you over into north lanes. There is no bottle exchange, and USAT officials will be out uh, patrolling, uh, looking for uh, violators of the rules. So again, we'll run it through for the sprint athletes. Transition. Come out, hang a right on the Jack Warner, out to Guildswood, do a U-turn, 
all the way east on Jack Warner, roughly in this area here. They're going to push you into the north side lanes, all the way off the Holt. You turn at 42nd Street, come back right over the Bryant Bridge. You turn at the end of the Bryant Bridge, heading back down west on Jack Warner to transition. That is one lap. So that is the sprint bike course. Age group nationals, Olympic distance run, uh, run course. One lap, 10K. I would label this as a challenging run course. There are, there are some hills out there that are going to test you. The roads are closed to traffic. There will be six aid stations. Each aid station will have water, uh, Gatorade, some hammer gel. Plenty of volunteers, police. The course will be well marked. There's no way you'll be able to get off course. There is one out and back section, which you'll see on the map here, that will have timing mats, again, to make sure that everyone is going to the furthest point on that out and back. So let's take a look at that course. So your transitionary is down in this area here. So after you come in off the bike, you're going to head out onto Jack Warner, past Guildwood right here where you're making your um, your U-turn. You're going to head to 21st. This is the out and back section. So you're going to head up, take a left turn on 21st almost all the way up to university. U-turn, head all the way back down. Timing mats will be up in this area to make sure everyone made that uh, the full out and back section. Back to Jack, Jack Warner. Head, heading, uh, heading west to Greensboro. You're going to head up Greensboro. This is a, this hill and this is a very, challenge, very steep hill, so these are going to challenge you here. So on 21st, and also here on Greensboro. Even though this is a short one, this is pretty steep. But you're going to head up Greensboro to 4th Street. You'll notice right in this area is the Tuscaloosa News. So you'll be running underneath the bridges. This will be underneath the bridges bring you out here. <clears throat> Excuse me. On the 31st. And then you, it's really kind of a little, uh, will weave you in and out of the streets in this area here. Kind of bringing you all the way around. On getting back on the Jack Warner again to Greensboro, hanging a left down Greensboro, and this will put you on to the bike path, uh, which is very, very shade, well shaded, uh, again, about an eight foot wide path. So this will bring you back up to Jack Warner, all the way back down to the here's where you'll pick up the path again. Well, this is getting well shaded with a lot of trees in this area bring you back into the transition area to the finish line right about there. So again, one lap, 10K. We'll move over to the sprint course. Sprint course is one lap, five kilometers. Now for the sprint, this one's primary flat, so you won't have to worry so much about the hills. Again, the roads are closed, the traffic, you'll have three, three aid stations out there with Gatorade, water, hammer gel, and again, plenty of volunteers and police to make sure you're staying on course and it will be very well marked. So we'll quickly look at that course. So very similar, except you'll be primarily staying on Jack Warner and on the bike path there. So again, coming out of transition, coming out of transition, heading up Jack Warner all the way down, past where you do the U-turn on Guildswood. Do you get to Greensboro, hang a right back onto the path, and then just follow Jack Warner, just like the Olympic distance does, onto the bike path into the finish area. And if you look down here, and this also for the um, uh, the Olympic distance, this will give you a close-up again. Kind of proximity, uh, the finish line, transition, swim starts right about here, so everything is very close in proximity after the race. Talk a little bit about the aid stations that you'll see out on the course. You'll see them just about every mile. Uh, there will be one aid station just outside of the transition as you start the run. And again, Gatorade, hammer gel, water will be, will be supplied at the aid station. On the bike course for both the Olympic distance and sprint event, uh, there is no bottle exchange on the bike course. So make sure you fill up your, your water bottles with whatever you need uh, for the bike portion. Talk a little bit about transition and what you'll see. You'll enter 
and this goes for both sprint and the Olympic distance. Uh, when you enter the transition area, you'll do so just off of Jack Warner, kind of on the, uh, the, 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 the southwest side of the transition area. There will be mount and dismount lines clearly marked. Each bike rack area will be individually numbered, so it's not a free-for-all, so you must rack your bike by the seat at that given number. For the Olympic distance race, only race essentials will be allowed in transition. Use the bag check. So for the sprint race, there is no bag check. Just try not to bring uh, too many uh, recliners and chairs and uh, all those other things that we've seen in many races. Again, uh, you can put out a, a towel, so we'll just kind of keep, keep it to the race essentials as much as we can for the sprint race um, then on Sunday. So bike removal for Saturday's age group nationals will be approximately from 11 to 2. For the sprint race, approximately 9.30 to 11.30. So again, try to get your bikes out during those times because we'll have other races that go on uh, on Saturday. And then we want to make sure to get everyone off uh, for the award ceremonies on Sunday for the sprint race. So we'll kind of look at the transition area map uh, a, little, a little closer, a little more detail here. Your swim start is kind of way off here on the left, off the screen to your left here. But as you come out of the water, Right here, you're going to kind of run up um, a path here. Right in this area, there's probably about 10 to 14 stairs that you'll have to run up. So about 10 to 14 stairs, you'll go up, enter this side of the transition area, find your bike, run it all the way to the mount line, which will be down in this area right here, head out onto the bike course. So as you go out, the guilds will do your turn. You'll come back through this area. You'll complete the entire bike course out the Holt and the Bryant Bridge, come back. As you come through here for the Olympic distance, age group nationals, you'll pass here, do a whole second lap. Sprint athletes, after you get to this point right here, you're going to take a right turn into the transition area. Rack your bike and head out into the run. So uh, age group athletes, uh, age group nationals athletes doing the Olympic distance. As you uh, get down here on Jack Warner, a little bit off the map, this is where that merging is going to take place for people entering the course and those athletes starting their second lap. So again, just keep your head up, pay attention, control your speed in that area so we uh, keep everybody safe. So you'll go do your second lap. As you complete your second lap, come all the way back around. You'll turn right here, dismount, and enter the transition area. Rack your bike, throw on your shoes, head out the transition the same way you did uh, on the bike and then head out onto the, head out onto the uh, run course. <clears throat> so when, when you get to the finish line, we'll have water Gatorade to hide you. There will be plenty of medical support. Uh, you'll receive your post-race gift at that time. Uh, we'll, have, we'll have really good post-race food for you. Uh, individually printed results will be provided at the finish line. So there will be a tent where you can go give them your bib number and they'll pin out, print out a little receipt with all your with all your uh, unofficial uh, race results. So again, you'll get that at the finish line as well. Uh, penalties and unofficial uh, results will be posted at, uh, at the race venue. Uh, pr protest, if you, you get a penalty that you would like to protest, you must do so 60 minutes after your finish time. So again, you have two, three hours or you show up to the award ceremony that night for the Olympic distance athletes, uh, that's too late. So again, at about 1 o'clock, the age group nationals results will be official, so any protest that needs to be done must be done 60 minutes after your finish time. Once we get to 1 p.m., the, the results will be official and then those adjustments will be made at that time. So for you sprint athletes on Sunday, you have to get your protest in be prior to 11 a.m. because after 11 a.m. we'll make the results official. Talk a little bit about the award ceremony. Uh, age group nationals on Saturday at the Bryant Conference Center, 6 to 8 p.m. We'll be going 10 deep in each age group, three deep in the Athena Clydesdale age groups there. And you'll see that the, the Athena Clydesdales are broken up into uh, 39 and under, 40 and over. Uh, the top three performing states will be recognized, so our uh, timing group will uh, tally up all the states and we'll have a uh, a top three rep representation of our uh, of the states for Sunday Sprint Nationals. Man, will the awards will take place at the race venue, Manderson Landing. 
that will approximately take place at about 11.30 a.m. So again, give, give or take uh, where those finishes are, we're looking uh, probably at 11.30 start time for those awards. We'll be going three deep in each age group at the Sprint Nationals. Also for the age group nationals, Olympic distance and Sprint, there will be Team USA signups both uh, at the, on Saturday and Sunday. So if you qualify for, to represent the United States at the World Championships in Beijing, you must do that on site on uh, Saturday and Sunday. A little bit more on Team USA and qualifying for the World Championships. Uh, again, Beijing, China is the location. Uh, September 10th and 11th is the date, and I, we heard that that might be pushed back one weekend uh, to the 7th and 18th, but we'll get you more information on that later. Uh, the top 18 in each age group qualify for Team USA. We will also roll down the slots down to 25th place. If you want more information about the qualifying, you can go to teamusatriathlon.org, and we'll go into a little bit more detail. And again, the great thing about Beijing, uh, you'll be competing on, at the, uh, uh, on most of the same course that the Beijing Olympic Games took place uh, for the sport of triathlon. And again, uh, so be on site if you want to claim those, uh, those spots at the award ceremony. So we just want to do a couple quick thank yous, especially to the city of Tuscaloosa for hosting the event. Mayor Walt Maddox has been a great supporter of, the, of triathlon uh, for the last four years. Uh, Tuscaloosa Convention and Visitors Bureau, Robert Ratliff, the executive director, as well as uh, Stephanie Maddox for all their support. Uh, the University of Alabama for allowing us to be on their campus, uh, Jenna Johnson, and also the Tuscaloosa Tr uh, Department of Transportation, Tara White, and Rex Buck. Also, without USAT's partners, uh, again, the, these events would not happen. So again, thank you to all the USAT goal partners that make this happen. So right now, we'll kind of open it up for some questions. If, if you have to, uh, and I have a list of questions here that I will uh, start to go through, and I'll try to answer them as best I can. But if you need additional help after this webinar, you can always email nationalevents at usatriathlon.org for additional uh, additional questions. So um, we got, uh, they kind of gave me a top 10 or 12 list here of uh, some of the questions, so I'll zip through some of these real quick. Uh, wetsuits, speed suits, will they be legal? Again, like as I mentioned, the, the water temperature will most likely be a non-wetsuit swim. Speed suits will not be, um, will not be allowed as well. River current, as I mentioned, there will not be a current. Again, the, because of the heavy rainfalls up north, uh, there was a domino effect with the dams releasing water, and unfortunately our dam just couldn't hold it any longer, and they opened the gates, but we have definitely got that straightened out with communication all the way up the river, so we will definitely have, a, have that controlled. There will be no currents. The question was roughly uh, regarding the eight stations, their locations. They're going to be just about every mile, and there will be mile markers on the course. Uh, so again, depending on the, it may not be sitting right on top of every mile, but it'll be very close to that, just depending on the terrain um, for that. And again, the bike course will not have an aid station. Carry everything that you need on the bike course. Uh, the practice swim. Uh, there is not a practice swim leading up to the event. So again, you know, if you're there Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there are some pools in the area. There's a YMCA. Uh, so there are, are areas you can get some pool swims in. The dinner tickets do need to be, uh, for the pre-dinner uh, uh, meal on Friday, you need to purchase those uh, by this Friday. And you can do that through the registration, uh, online registration process uh, that you did to sign up for the event. The question was, can bikes be taken out of transition Saturday morning for warm-up? The, the answer is no. Once those bikes are checked in, they're staying in transition. So again, if you need a warm-up in the morning, you might want to do a, a quick jog, but there will be uh, no bike warm-ups allowed outside of transition. If you have a trainer with you, you can bring that into transition, warm-up, but once transition closes, that trainer needs to either be in the bag check or back in your car or back to the hotel room. Uh, so those are the only way you'll be able to get a bike warm-up in. Do you need to wear a shirt the entire race? Uh, no, male, male athletes, uh, you do not have to have 
a shirt on the entire race. So again, the, uh, that is an ITU rule that you, your, your torso must be covered. So again, uh, no shirts for men. Uh, you do not have to wear one. Tra and again, I'll make a correction again I, on the, one of the early, earlier slides. The uh, transition for the opens at 6.30, not 6, as I mentioned earlier. It is a deep water start. So again, for the swim, it will be in water. You will not be able to, there's, you won't be able to touch the bottom. It is relatively deep in that area. So you'll be a deep water start. There was a question about throwing cups, gel uh, packs, you know, on the, on, the, um, on the run course. You know, make sure if you have any trash, you know, the cups that you have, just drop them relatively close to the aid station. You know, don't take them out another half, three quarters of a mile and drop them. Uh, again, as long as they're within a rel relatively close proximity to that aid station, you're fine. You would not get a penalty for abandoning or littering out on the course. So same thing on the bike course. Don't just toss your bottle. Don't throw gel packs uh, on the side of the road. You know, if official sees that, they can issue a penalty. So bring your trash back to the transition, dump it in your area, um, and then again, be good to the environment, be good to the city for allowing us to, to use, their, use their roads. Bike pumps, can they come into transition? The question, the answer to that is yes. So if you want to bring your own bike pump in the morning, that's great. Bring in, pump your tires, do what you need to do. But again, when transition closes for the Olympic age group nationals event, uh, that bike pump will need to go into the bag check. It says, uh, someone was asking about body, uh, the bib numbers, are they required on the bike course? The answer is no. You only, as long as your bike number is on your seat post or on your rear brake cable and it's clearly visible to the official, you do not need to have that number on the bike. You do need to have it on for the run. You're, you will not receive your timing chip on Friday at packet pickup. You will receive that timing chip race morning uh, at the transition area. So when you come to check in, you'll get a body marking on the back of your calf. Again, your age as of December 31st, 2010. So that will be on the back of your calf. You will show up already tattooed up with your race numbers on there. So that you only need to pick up your chip, get your calf marked with your age, and then you'll enter the transition area. Regarding Clydesdale and Athena, if you signed up for the Clydesdale or Athena division, you will be racing in your age group. And then at the end of the day, we will pull out all the Clydesdale and Athena athletes um, for the awards. So again, Clydesdales and Athenas, you will be racing in your age group. The bike racks, the question here was about the uh, how will bike racks be numbered. You'll be, they'll be individually numbered with your bib number. So it is not a free-for-all. So you will, if you're number 1122, there will be a spot on the um, there will be a spot on the uh, bike rack that says 1122. That's where you will rack your back bike, and you'll rack by your seats. So those are the, the most popular questions that we saw. Um, I think, again, as I mentioned before, the national events at usatriathlon.org is uh, the, the email address if you have further questions. Again, we, we we're very excited. We can't wait to have everyone in Tuscaloosa. Um, it's again, it's the biggest event of the race of the year, so we look forward to it. We are about sold out, so the best, uh, best in the country is going to be there racing. So again, we wish you all the best of luck, safe travels to the event, and then uh, uh, Emily, if there's anything else you need from me, I think we've covered everything. So again, thank you for attending, and uh, we look forward to seeing you in Tuscaloosa. Thank you, Jeff. Um, it, one thing, it seems like a lot of people um, want clarification on whether or not speed suits are allowed. Speed, speed suits are not allowed during the race. Okay, that, thank you. Yes. Okay, great. Um, thank you so much. That was a lot of extremely helpful information there. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to remind everyone that a copy of Jeff's presentation and a recording of this webinar will be available on the USAT um, website, which is uh, www.usatriathlon.org. Um, but you will receive an email in the next few days with the direct link to the presentation and the recording. Um, so thank you again, everyone, for joining us today. And have a great night. Thanks again, Jeff. Thank you.